What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the ZMM Show. Mike here. We're looking at Season 11 for Walking Dead. Guys, it's been so long since I've talked with you all. Thanks for coming back. For those who want to get a little post-show talk going on. I mean, what an episode. I mean, the way they brought everything back in. I mean, it's almost like we feel like it didn't, like nothing really ended. Like, we just can continue the storyline, which is great. They're keeping pace and they're moving towards this crazy end, which I'm telling you guys, that's what I'm looking for the most on this show, is how are they going to end off The Walking Dead? And I pray they do it right, because on so many shows, they've taken the short route, they've taken the lazy route, um, so hopefully they do it right. But with tonight's episode, it's called Asheron Part 1. So there's two parts. It's kind of interesting how they did that for the first two episodes of the season. Now, mind you, this is an extended season 11. It's going to actually go well into uh, 2022. So it, Walking Dead's going to be around for a while. It's definitely not going anywhere. Uh, and don't forget, they also have that Daryl and Carol spinoff, which, by the way, I wish they wouldn't have announced that, because now we know pretty much that Daryl and Carol have plot armor thick as, well, as anything out there. So they're basically not going to die off. But I digress. They're here. We're all there. Uh, we're seeing this unfold. So basically... Basically, we start off the episode, we get to see them going into this military depot of some sorts, which is pretty cool. And what I thought was really neat about this, and it seems like they're always kind of trying to like add in little tidbits and little new things with zombies as they move along the show, is the zombies had gone dormant. It's like they had no stimuli down there to keep them you know, aroused to the, their surroundings or what was going on, no sound whatsoever. And so when Maggie and some of the others descended in to basically grab what they're now looking for as MREs, they find all this food, which is awesome. Uh, I don't know how they found the location, but, you know, whatever. We move on with the story. But when they all started to kind of come to, and that was pretty cool when Daryl grabbed that bag and that drop of blood fell right down on that zombie and that was enough to start, well, a few drops of it, started to reanimate it and then, you know, all hell broke loose. Thank goodness those weapons had some ammo still left in it but it does really spark the curiosity what in the heck happened to those uh, men and women that were down there in that military depot i mean they still had weapons they still had ammo what went down now, maybe was it earlier on when they didn't know what was going to happen and maybe someone ended up dying off and then the night started you know chewing on people and then it just spread like wildfire and this took took them all out who knows these things i'd love to see the flashback even if it was just a five to ten minutes short I bet it would have been insane. But they make it out of that one barely. I mean, you gotta gotta love Walking Dead. They always put them in some pretty crappy situations, and they manage to usually make it out. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that, that nobody got it in that encounter, but a strong start. But as the, as the show went on, we got to see some different views. So we see Alexandria is starving, okay, right? And it always comes back down to food, right, guys? Food and water. This is the two main essential things we need to live, and it was only a matter of time. We even hear Carol mention something about how they had taken on a few new communities, you know, and, you know, heavy is the head that wears the crown, you know, in which it's several members on this council, but taking in more and more people, I mean, you know, at some point you have to wonder, do I stop bringing in others? Because I'm literally going to starve out my own people, people that we've grown to come fond of, love, this and that, and it's a hard decision. I mean, do you let others starve and die right in front of you? And it's a hard decision. I don't know. But but clearly they're trying to go the hard route and get the food that they need. And, you know, Maggie, let's get on to Maggie for a second here. Okay, listen, uh, for them, those that have been sticking with my takes on the show and this and that, I have never really enjoyed Maggie in the past few seasons. Now, mind you, she was gone for a while, but she's back, and it's pretty much what I remember. It's dictator Maggie. And and someone could argue with me. They'd say, well, yeah, Rick was the same way. Mm, I disagree. I think Rick always put himself in front of all others, but it was for the good of the community. Maggie, it's not like so much, it's always personal for her. It's always like Maggie with a vengeance, you know? And I don't mean just Glenn. And yes, we're going to get into her and Negan in a moment here. Holy crap. There's something that really happened towards the end of the episode. But um, yeah, it's just something about her that rubs me terribly wrong. And I just feel like it's kind of like you're just on this, well, and they even mentioned it in the show, like this death march. Kind of like, well, this is what we're going to do, and if you don't like it, well, that's kind of too bad. We're doing it. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, who died made you queen of the of the zombie lords or whatever. So, you know, so here, you know, we, I, I get, I'm going you know, on a rant here. I'm just getting back into it. But in the show, basically, we see that Aaron and I think it's Carol and Rosalita all disagree with Maggie. They're like, Maggie... This sounds like a suicide run. They want to go back to Maggie's old settlement. 
and uh, they went. There's supposedly there's tons of food there and whatever. But apparently these like silent whisper people clan whatever the guy that was using the sniper rifle to pick them off one by one in the what was it, second or third to last episode last season. Uh, the dude who blew himself with a grenade. So basically those guys. So apparently they don't have many, but they're well armed. And basically they come at night, and when they do, you're pretty much dead. And so that's not exactly comforting. And I'm telling you, I was kind of with Rosalita. I was like, listen, you know, maybe we try and find another way. And, you know, I know when things are getting dire and you just have no choice, sometimes you have to make those tough decisions. But as we fall through and, and, and to it, they get down. And Negan along the way is, I guess, their tour guide. And, well, he's, that's what he's been told. He's basically there to lead them through to get to this the settlement uh, through D.C. I think they said they're in Washington. My wife and I were trying to figure out where exactly we were now. I kept forgetting. Uh, so basically, and they're so they're, they're making their way through, trying to get to the settlement. And you know, Negan, he kept pushing. He's just like, I don't think this is a good idea, you know, whatever. But you could see Maggie wasn't having it. She's like, you're not making the decisions here. Basically, shut up and do your job. And that's it. And you could see Daryl was kind of backing her. And he's like, we're not buds. Don't talk to me like you know me or whatever. I'm like, Daryl, really? I mean, we've kind of been past this, dude, right? I mean, he doesn't have to be your best friend, but Negan's come through. He, he's he's done the right thing more than several times, you know? So it's time to start either burying the hatchet or something or, or let the dude go on and do whatever the hell. I mean... I mean, you can't just be your lap dog forever. Now, maybe you could. I don't know. But I just I just think it's wrong. I don't think it's right. And Because I know. See, we're all starting to get a fondness for Negan because he's usually right. And it's probably what kept him alive for so damn long and made him a great leader, even though he was ruthless to the core. But I think he's learned some lessons in between. And I think he's found maybe a happy medium. I don't know. It could be going too far on that statement, but time will tell. Uh, so basically, you know, what I really want to point out is when they went down into the metro system, when I saw that, I was just like, well, this is literally the worst idea ever. I mean, at least out in the open, you have choices, right? There's multiple streets, there's alleyways, there's homes, there's things you can do. In the metro, you have a length of tunnel, and that's pretty much it. I'm like, oh, don't do it. But it's great for drama, so thank you, Walking Dead, for bringing the drama element. Back to it. So Negan calls out Maggie, basically saying that, you know, everybody's coming along and following you on this death march. He goes, but I'm not having it because I know ultimately you want me dead anyways. And we all know this is true, right? I mean, and he called her out straight up in front of everybody. And he even said, you know, Daryl, I can tell now. I actually thought you are in on this, but I can tell now that you're not because... You can see it in his eyes or this or that or just maybe the confusion of what was going down. And Maggie's just kind of staring at him. And then she comes back with a pretty clever response, you know. Uh, Daryl punches him when Negan drops the name Glenn. I mean, you shouldn't have done that, Negan. I'm telling you that right there. That was a bad move. <laughs> but uh, so you, you deserve the punch. I'm going oh, I'm to give Daryl that. But after that, she kind of gives this kind of elegant and forceful saying basically like you know the the young girl that you knew six years ago there's only a little bit of her left but you don't want that to come out because if it does i will murder you right where you stand but i'm just like maggie uh you're nothing but vengeance and yes i realize what happened to you but you need him you need each other you know this is dire situations if you treat him like a lap dog and a piece of you know what then he's gonna he's gonna uh, reciprocate in the same way it's back to you all so yeah, they get into it. There's all these body bags down there, right? You guys saw it. It was insane. And all their throats were slit and cut, so the zombies couldn't even make noise. That was pretty creepy. But they were all bagged up, roped, and left down in this metro station. Talk about, what the hell? Get out of here. And Negan brought up great points. Why are we going into this thing? We don't even know who put these things down here or what they're all about. They keep going down, and uh, basically, they now what I want to know is, so there were two members, the young kid that almost got bent, and then the older guy, because once Negan started talking about, I'm not going any further, those two were like, yeah, we don't go either, and then those two just straight up disappeared, and apparently they had a lot of ammo and some other supplies that they needed for their journey to the settlement to try and retake it. Uh, and then suddenly they get ambushed from behind. So not only do they have all these body bags where they're clearing them and killing them by uh, their knives, but now they're getting you know surrounded from the back. So I was just it was just insane, guys. I was just like, wow, this is exactly why you don't go down into an enclosed tunnel structure. You know, where you only have basically one way in or out. It's just it's no bueno. So, uh, but let's talk about the big moment there at the end when Maggie is the last one to get up, and Negan was he got up just out, uh, before her, and she starts slipping for some reason. I don't understand why she really couldn't get her grip but whatever she couldn't get up there maybe all her gear and Negan kind of looks over and she yells for his name and my wife and I we were I was thinking to myself too I was like yeah he's gonna reach down and pull her up and then she's gonna be like oh you saved me maybe you're not so bad redemption nah it was not redemption was it I mean he just kind of looked and then he freaking backed off on top of the rail car and just was like peace 
And I was just like, wow, I was not expecting that. And I'm so glad the show decided to go the different route and not give us just more of the same cliche type stuff that we're used to. So this season is definitely going to be full of a lot of fun stuff. And let's not forget also, I'm not going to go into super detail with it, but we had Eugene, Yumiko, um, Ezekiel. And Princess are all with the Commonwealth, and they're getting just drilled by these interview questions for hours on end. And I, lo- I loved it when Ezekiel finally just bust out laughing, because I kind of did too. And they're like, what, do you think this is funny? And he's like, yeah, I actually, I kind of I kind of do. And I was like, I agree, Ezekiel. I mean, give it to him, you know? I mean, you know, screw these guys, you know, <laughs> whatever. But except that your life is pretty much in their hands. We don't know enough about the Commonwealth and, you know, what, uh, they talked about something about reprocessing, which seems like they're just re- kind of re-putting them through the interviews. There was a, a scene where basically they asked a man and woman, how long have you been here? The guy said, like, four months, and then his wife or woman friend said nine months. So it's like, holy crap, you guys have been there up, up to maybe nine months? That is insane. What are they waiting for? Why are they still there? Why don't they just let you go, kill you, this or that, whatever? I don't know, guys. This Commonwealth stuff, I mean, I get it that they're super cautious or whatever, and I know Eugene wants to find... Uh was it Stephanie, I think her name was, you know, to, he wants to meet her because he kind of had a little romance with, but like, we just don't know enough about these guys, you know, clearly they've been living and living well because they're all in like suits and they're up in their stormtrooper armor, which is awesome, by the way, um, but it's just insane, and so they're trying to escape and we're going to see where this all ends out, but uh, from what the preview showed on the next episode, I think they're going to get recaptured. Somehow they managed to get a couple of the other Stormtrooper outfits, and then Eugene and Yumiko were managed to get into them, and then they were leading uh, the two prisoners, Ezekiel and uh, uh, Princess, out, like they were going to reprocessing or so forth. But what was interesting there, if you guys didn't catch it, Yumiko was staring at that board with all those pictures, and it said something about expedited uh, processing and basically get these people straight to the Commonwealth. And Yumiko's brother, and I didn't know what it was. I thought it might have been her lover or this or that. I, I wasn't picking up on it, but it was her brother, was I guess one of those members, and he was sent to the um, to the Commonwealth, wherever the heck these guys are. And so, of course, Shima goes like, "We can't go now." So this is a huge problem because obviously the others want her to go with them. And anyways, they're going to probably get recaught, and then we'll have to see where it unfolds from there. But guys, this season's going to look pre- it looks pretty insane. Uh, it's obviously going to go for a while, so again, we have some time to kind of I don't know, just let it all sink in and where this is all going. Is Rick going to come back? Gosh, I hope so. That is my boy. That is my favorite character. But uh, I know we had those movie or movies. I got to look it up, guys. I got to be honest. I'm not even sure where they're at anymore. I know they're doing at least one, but originally it was supposed to be like a trilogy, but then I heard the trilogy thing was kind of getting next. I'll try and find out the information for you and get it to you. Otherwise, leave me something in the comments. Let me know what you thought about tonight's episode. Did you enjoy it? Is it what you expected? Or are you just kind of like, eh, not really what I wanted and not sure where the season's going? I'll tell you, I'm I'm excited. I'm ready to see where this is all going to go. I want to see how this is going to end out. And unfortunately, the losses that we're going to consume on the way there. And there are going to be some losses, guys. So get ready. Uh, As I think Princess said, I think on... uh, Chris Hardwick was talking to her, and she said, this is the calm before the storm, and I believe it. I believe it, and it's going to be amazing. So thanks for coming out, and if you did stick all the way through this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy. I may be doing reaction videos moving forward. I did it with Fear of the Walking Dead. I'd like to do it again here, but my wife and I usually like to watch this together, so we'll see how this is going to go down. So thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for supporting the channel, and guys, I will see you hopefully next week. I'm supposed to be on vacation. I'm going to try and do a recording while we're in Florida, and I'll hopefully get that to you, but if not, I will see you in a couple weeks, and we will continue this crazy journey. Again, this is Mike with the Z-Man show and i will catch you guys at the next review see you guys